Hey guys, it's Nick. Welcome to another episode of Team Minus 365. Today's episode, I'm going to be covering patch management of macOS devices in Microsoft Intune or Endpoint Manager as it's better known today. Many of us have been using third-party tools like Jam for Adigy over the years to manage macOS devices just because of some of the limitations we have with Microsoft Intune. Over the years though, Microsoft's been adding more and more features and the core feature that I'm going to be showing you today is actually in preview, but it does allow you to manage the macOS updates across an organization. So in addition to that, I'll be showing you some of the other components within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center that you can use to manage the OS updates. And lastly, I will be showing you where you can go to monitor those updates as well too across devices. As always, if this content's helpful, go ahead and like and subscribe. Otherwise, let's go ahead and dive in. Okay, so we're here within the Endpoint Manager Admin Center. We're gonna go under Devices here and we're gonna scroll down under the Policy section and here you'll see Update Policies for Mac OS, which is currently in preview at the time of this recording. I'm gonna go ahead and create a profile here, put in the basic name and description. I'm just gonna call this Tests for the purposes of this video. The major thing that you'll want to see here as a call out is the prerequisite, which is that you have to have these devices enrolled through Apple's automated device enrollment with ABM or Apple Business Manager. So that's a very hard requirement. Many of us have this set up today for enrolling corporate macOS devices and syncing them to Intune. But if you've never done that before, I'll link below a couple of my videos I have on that initial setup and configuration that you can follow as well. Within here though, we have behavior settings and schedule settings that we can configure. Under the behavior settings, we have the various types of updates like critical updates, firmware, etc. And underneath here, you can select the uh, behavior in which the settings are applied as far as the updates go. So we have download and install, which will download the updates and install them. You have the download only, which will only download and try to install maybe on the next reboot. You have install immediately, which in my opinion is the most user intrusive, meaning that it will try to trigger a countdown to reboot the device. And so if you don't change the schedule type, in which I'll get to immediately here afterwards, you will have a user that's potentially getting their device rebooted in the middle of the day, which is obviously not ideal. So you wanna kind of avoid that one. Notify only is giving the user the heads up that the updates are available and the next time that they reboot, they'll have those installed. And then you can do install later, which will download all the updates and just wait on the actual install for a period of time that you want to designate. So a lot of these, in my opinion, kind of overlap and it's kind of confusing just to visualize, you know, which, which one that you would want to go with, but I would try to mirror them against a lot of your Windows update policies and how you do things today. So in a lot of cases, like for the critical updates, you may want to download and install, but the key thing down below is the schedule type. So just def defining what settings you want to choose for when this actually gets applied. And as you can see here by default, when the update policy is assigned, it employs at the latest device uh, check-in, which for Intune and macOS devices is at about an eight hour interval. So every eight hours it will check back in and try to apply the updates based off of what you've selected here as far as your settings. So the more common option I think for most MSPs to adopt is doing the update during a schedule time. And here you can select your time zone, it's using UTC. So I'm Mountain Time, so I'll use UTC plus six. And then for this, you're needing to decide the days and start and end times for these update windows that you have. So in a lot of cases, if you're doing after hours, this is just an example, but you could say at Sunday at 11, or I should say really Monday at 11, and then we'll say Tuesday at 5 a.m. is the update window. So just the after hours of business here where we're applying or trying to apply those updates um, that we have from the settings and behavior settings that we have above. So again, you could configure this out to be every single day. It could be a couple days a week. It's all up to you, but if you're familiar with the Windows update rings, this probably looks pretty familiar to you in a lot of ways. So these are the actual update settings that you can configure and push out on a schedule, but in the Windows environment or the Windows update ring settings, you also have this concept of a deferral period where you can defer the updates when they come in for a certain period of time. And many of us like to do that just because of bugs that'll come out with the first iteration. So we wanna wait about a week or two weeks after the initial update 
when it comes out to actually enforce that across all devices. So you can't do that within these settings here, but I can show you how to do it in another section of the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, which is actually here under the Devices section. Going under Configuration Profiles, creating a new profile, selecting Mac OS, and then selecting Settings Catalog for the profile type. Go ahead and click on Create. Again, just putting Test in here, and we're going to click on Add Settings. So the settings we'll want to look for first here is restrictions. And you can scroll down into the E section here because this will be where the main ones you'll want to look at are located. And here you get to select the um, deferral period. So this is for major OS uh, deferral period. And you could say that this is 14 days. You could do the same thing with minor updates as well too. You may want to be on a lower interval for that one just because they're minor updates. But again, this is all up to you to choose and you can do non-OS deferred installs as well too, which relate more to like the apps and things like that as well. So that's one section that you can use to do that. The other section here is the software update. And by default, you have like these selected to true, which is saying that we want to automatically install the Mac OS updates. So you'd want to toggle that to false. And you could do critical updates and leave that to true if you really wanted to as well. So lots of configuration settings here though, but if you're enforcing a delay, you probably want to turn this off to false. And that way the end user can't change that as well too, it would be restricted from changing that on their actual device to be grayed out for them to choose. So this is just another place you can go to configure more of those deferral periods in addition to creating the, the uh, overall policy for the updates. And so the next thing I wanted to really showcase is kind of combining this with your conditional access and compliance policies. So many of us may not have been adopting the compliance policies where you enforce a minimum OS, but if you go into that here and you go ahead and create a new policy and we'll select Mac OS, well, let's test again. Under the device properties, this is where you can configure a minimum OS version. So many of us may not have been enforcing this because we weren't able to do or properly manage the patch cycle centrally as well. And so this might be something that you want to start adopting. Obviously the downside is it's not gonna be automatically updating for you. So you'll have to periodically come in here and update this. But I think that's kind of a good practice. You should be reevaluating your compliance policies at least on a semi-annual basis if not more frequent, like on a quarterly basis. But with this in place, you can then enforce more of the conditional access policies like blocking a user on a non-compliant device, which would then force them to go ahead and upgrade their OS if it's a later version. You may already be doing this today, but again, some of us may not have adopted this just because we weren't able to control the patches centrally. The last thing that I want to show you guys is just monitoring the updates within the environment. So Microsoft under the devices section again has this monitor tab. There's actually a lot of cool reports in here that you can go check out. But the one that you want to look for for this is called the installation status for Mac OS devices. And I don't have anything in here right now, but once it starts applying, we'll have the update status, device names, OS version, and last updated, which is a good central location, just monitor things and making sure things are working correctly from the policies that you've configured. All right, guys, that's everything I wanted to showcase for you today on patch management of Mac OS devices within Microsoft Intune. As always, when you're looking at these changes, definitely try to do an internal rollout first, just to understand the various behavior settings you can configure there, document that appropriately for your technicians before rolling it out to all of your customers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier, like and subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.